This video is going to focus primarily on the uh, mechanical build of the Affinia uh, 3D uh, printer. So, um, I guess starting off, first things first, the motherboard. Um, you can kind of see, um, sort of all, all integrated, all the stepper drivers are integrated. Um, there's a, a daughter board for the motherboard. Um, there's a uh, SD card. Uh, one nice thing about the Affinia is um, once you send a print to it, uh, you can unplug it from the computer, basically. Uh, you don't need to be sitting there feeding it G-code, kind of like some other printers. Um, so that can be useful. Um, cabling's all pretty you know, pretty clean, pretty good. Uh, it's got like end stops, limit home switches. Um, this is the cabling sort of the, this is the main cable coming from the extruder um, this is the cable coming from the heated bed um, stepper motor connectors um, there's a little piezo buzzer down under here uh, one of the first things you'll want to do is put some tape over it because it is so loud like it is extraordinarily loud um, so um, yeah um, the body main body is built out of uh, pretty thick uh, gauge steel I'm assuming um, basically have um, sort of like uh, two plates that will fit on each other and screw together um, there's a motherboard tray that goes over this and then um, sort of supporting the gantry there's a, a big piece that goes over here too um, one thing you'll notice is uh, all the axes use linear slides um, and uh, you know that makes for uh, a you know pretty reliable, um, very good resolution. Um, some of the you know like home-built printers will use uh, like lead screws, and lead screw quality varies quite a bit. Um, so you end up with things like interlayer wobble. So you'll end up with like instead of a straight instead of printing a straight line, it'll be kind of like it'll kind of go back and forth. Like basically, kind of looks like ruffles, like because they have ridges and um, so uh, every axis has a home, basically a home homing switch on it. Um, the belt's are really nice quality. I think these are GT2 belts. I don't know, they say 2GT, so I'm assuming that's a GT2 belt. Um, all the important parts are uh, basically uh, high quality molded. Um, so these bearing holders <coughs> are, are all molded. The, um, the pulleys sort of the, the stepper pulley gears are all molded um, let's see um, one, one nice thing about the Affinia I mean it's, it's basically an up printer and up has even though this this printer design has been around for a little bit um, they they sort of keep upgrading it um, and plus the Affinia uh, it looks like there's even more changes for the positive um, like one thing that I that I really notice here is um, this is the mount that holds the extruder head, uh, and it's 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 very beefy. In the older up models, um, it was a, it was pretty thin, and it would bounce around a bit um, and cause some print quality issues. But uh, this is this is you know almost overkill, um, and uh, you know it's going to result in better print quality. Um, on the back of it. pretty standard stuff, USB port, um, this is a DCN for it. Um, this I think is sort of a, there used to be an optional feeder accessory um, that would basically help unspool the plastic from the spool. Um, I think that maybe early on that was an up accessory that was popular. I haven't really seen anyone use it recently. So. Um, this is basically the, the base for the heated bed platform. Um, you can kind of notice um, there's sort of a cartridge style heater that goes in. Basically, this is a solid piece of aluminum. Uh, there's a cartridge style, style heater that goes in there, as well as a, a cartridge style uh, temperature unit. Um, I think people are saying it's a platinum R, what was it, RTD, 100 ohm RTD. Um, the heated bed is actually just a solid piece of aluminum also, um, 
basically screws into here from underneath. I just have the screws in, so it's like screws in from underneath. Um, originally, the ups, uh, people were recommending either use blue tape straight on that or uh, like an acrylic paint. That's why some of the videos you'll see it'll be like green paint on it. Um, now they've sort of more been pushing this perf board solution. You know, and I have to say the perf board works really well for me. Um, you can either clamp it down with uh, these little binder clips um, for just you know quick small prints. If you're doing a large print and you want to, you're sort of, sort of more concerned with warping. Um, the screw holes in here match on the heated bed. Um, yeah, the extruder basically is. Um, let's see. The extruder is um, kind of this interesting unit. Um, it's basically fed via this ribbon cable. Um, it has you know breakouts for uh, the stepper, the heater, and a temperature unit, the uh, cooling fan. Um, here's the heater, sort of the heater block. Here, the nozzle. Um, this sort of metal heat sink here basically tries to bleed off as much heat as it can from the, uh, the nozzle and just uh, kind of keep keep that heat from propagating. Um, upwards and you know melting the filament or whatnot. Um, one thing on the you know Finian up is they keep modifying this wind barrier, keep improving it. So um, they release those files. You can download them, print new ones. Um, this basically is a little door that will open and close um, and change how much air is basically blown onto the nozzle and the and the freshly extruded plastic. So. Um, you know, there's different types of prints where maybe you'll want to have it all the way open, some, you know, all the way closed. Um, you just kind of play around a little bit, but, uh, you know, it's, an, it's a nice little addition. Here's another stepper that I just had um, with the extruder head on it. Um, you can kind of see if you were to take this off. So there's the feeder gear, and um, you can kind of see the channel that the filament runs in through basically gets sandwiched between this bearing and the uh, and the stepper gear and that's sort of how it gets fed. Um, the one kind of downside about this is that uh, it, since that gap is sort of set all the time, um, you know if you are using third-party filament you might have more feeding problems just because it's you know, it's not as able to handle um, you know variations in, in filament thickness. So um, yeah, I think that's that's about it for as far as the physical overview of it. Um, really well made. The linear slides are nice. Um, I guess one thing to mention is um, since it is a linear slide, there's nothing keeping it up. So when you when you turn the printer off, this is basically going to fall. Um, you know, so just you know put your hand under it when you turn it off. Um, but uh, overall, you know, really well made printer. Um, I think you know when it first came out, people were thinking, "Oh, you know, a Chinese printer." Um, but uh, you know, I think overall, everybody's, you know, you can't really fault it as far as build quality is concerned.